I'm on my way to see Exorcist Believer. Right, I'm going for the 8 p.m. showing at the light in New Brighton. I'm on my way there now, about two hours away from going. But I'm expecting just a basic, pleasant experience, all round experience, as if I was watching it on my 1080p at home, but larger. At the light in New Brighton, just a spare of the moment thought. Thought I'll go and pop and see it while everything was quiet. I have seen spoiler filled reviews. I'm not going to see it for the the the, the ah, shock horror at all. I'm not going to see it for that. I'm going to see it just to literally see what it's like. I'm well aware that there's going to be someone really old in it. Um, that raises loads of things in my head because I'm sure she's portraying someone 10 years younger than she really is in the movie. I think the, the, the people who made the movie are probably working out, well, okay, yeah, this lady who is pivotal to really getting lots more bums on seats than what it might otherwise get. Might get away with. What can we, what can she perhaps get away with in this sequel? So, it's, uh, you know, I think, I think they're just skating on um, all realms of possibility in, in regards to the believability of getting this character back, the ethics, the morals of actually doing it in the real time. People of her age can drop dead at any minute. It's bordering on sick, actually. I've seen what the actress goes through. Well, I've seen what the character goes through in this movie. Putting someone so old through what she appears to go through. What age can we get away with portraying here? I was shocked that they did put someone so old through that. Yeah, it is. It's bordering on sick, actually, putting someone so old through the rigours of this kind of movie making. Uh, a woman of her age shouldn't be wearing, um, shouldn't be, shouldn't be showing her. She shouldn't be wearing. She shouldn't be. She shouldn't be wearing fashionable clothes to make her look twenty-two. Get me? So that was shocking to see her. Uh, wearing such attire, dare I say it, um, I don't know how to put it. A woman looking like she was 22, fashion clothes, fashionable items of clothing to make her look like she's 22. I mean, that that's all, I mean, really, I can say without being crude. Uh, shocking, that was shocking to me, to be honest with you, which I could see in the trailers and in all the reviews, the, the clips they show online. Um, but yet to see an actress of her age in a, having a, such a strong narrative, um, it's a... Uh, uh, it's a... Uh, the, the woman in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the remake for that, she was... Um, she was made out to be 50 years as well. Uh, that movie was 50 years in the future from which the, the movie was sequel to. Uh, would she be alive in the sequels? Will the, will, will the actress be alive for the sequels? I'm wondering. Okay, the, the character, yeah, I mean, but the actress... She, she, they could just simply not include her in the sequels, couldn't couldn't they? Anyway, I'm getting above myself now. I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to look forward to seeing it. I saw an interview recently about the actresses making her... Yeah. I'm making that movie, being involved in making that movie. It's online. Um, about her thoughts. It was, it was specifically questions regarding the original movie she was in and she looked really good in it it could have been as early as 2505 I went online and I had a look at her images 
and based on her hair and how she looked and how she held herself it looked like it could have been around about 05 and she looked great in it and the things she was talking about was about her involvement in the original Exorcist really she was really warm and she was really accommodating and she was she looked like she was excited to be answering questions from the chap from the interviewer she looked like she was excited to be the interviewee and it, it did it watch great as a little interview about her involvement in the exorcist the original and it is now what looks to me like about 10 years after that interview and how she has aged quite considerably between the two and it is concerning um, even she looks considerably older than how she looked in the movie she does look actually older now in the junket in all the press cuttings the promotional cuttings even even so to me the impression i'm getting is quite concerning one in which she might not be around for any for, for much longer she may not be around for much longer um uh how upsetting and how sad it it might be uh, she looks like uh, she comes across like she's finding it difficult to breathe it looks like she's finding it really difficult her, ch her chest is tight uh, she's finding it difficult to catch air and she does look she does look like she does look absolutely knackered like she's at the end of her tether uh, she just looks like a rabbit in headlights she just looks in this junk of press clippings you know for the movie she just looks like she just looks like she hasn't got another day left in her which is quite concerning like I say even compared to how she looks in the trailer for this movie she looks again she looks she looks like she's really coming on further on in her journey in life uh, it's just uh, yeah it's, it's, it's just throwing up lots and lots of uh, concern Am I going to go see this movie, which I'm probably going to enjoy, and in a few weeks' time, I'm going to be looking back from under a morbid veil. Should we have had her make another movie? Should the makers have actually put her through that? Um, uh, yeah, concerning. Like I say, I'm just going to go. I'm just going in now. I'm just going to go and check it out and just take it i'm gonna i'm just i'm gonna take it as i see it and yeah i'm just gonna go and watch it and i'll see you on the other side just come out the cinema about three quarters of an hour ago um yeah, it was. I, I had a grand time. I um, felt completely out of place there. Just full of kids. Duh. But we all enjoyed it. I could tell there was a few folk there who were there just to have a kiss and a cuddle. There was all kinds of ages there. Uh, people who were quite close to 18. Um, young people. But, I mean, 25, 24. There were lots of people that age in there. I I had a smashing time, but was it aimed for someone of my age range? For my age? I don't know. I just don't know. Bringing back the actress, the, the lady who was um, from the original. That was completely cash grab. She said she didn't take any money for it, and it was whatever she did get. Uh, she ha gave it away to a charity. I don't believe it. I just think she, they were all saving face by saying that. I think they were all just very embarrassed. Um, asking someone so of such an age to um, <laughs> appear in a movie. I think everyone was just so embarrassed about that fact. Uh, 
I do think she was paid and I think she was paid and well and just like an actress of any age would have been Cash paid. Drab. Complete and utter cat trap. I think the Blumhouse Studios uh, thought their lottery numbers came in when she said yes to take on the role to come back for this sequel. I think Blumhouse's eyes lit even more so than the than the resurrection of Laurie Strode. Yeah. I think these kids running around lending money off the banks call themselves Blumhouse Studios, Blumhouse Productions. I think all these kids now just crossing the dotted line and I think they're all giggling and salivating to the heart's content. What movie franchise next are they gonna pull out the hat? Like I mentioned, the girl in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, she was 50 years as well. That was a 50 year return. But she was younger in the, in the movie she was sequeling. She, she was younger in that. The girl in this, she was mid 30s. Mid to late, she, she was about 33, 35 in the first Exorcist. So they couldn't have pushed it anymore. Um, I was giggling, thinking the only other is Titanic, and Cameron's Titanic. That wasn't, uh, that wasn't for, ca ca that wasn't for profit margins. That was simply a character in a narrative having to be a certain age for it, for it to run true for the story. This was pure and simple cash grab. Pure and simple. The crassest of cash grabs ever imaginable. Abominable. Absolutely abominable the way when the camera came onto her. When she appeared in the movie. And she could barely walk. How I thought that that promotional, how she may have aged since making the movie to when she was filming all that promotional, all the promotional junket, which was appearing online. No, no, that is how she actually was in the movie. Like I said, she could barely walk and, and that was real time. You, I could tell that is literally how she is in real life, simply by her appearance and like I say, how she was appearing in the, in the junket for the publicity. Clever editing enabling her to speak in sentences. Her chest and her ability to catch breath. For it to be believed that she was speaking in the manner in which the edit portrayed. Unbelievable. The power of editing actually enabled the character to talk in sentences. Which is why, looking back on the whole process of the uh, trailers, the marketing for this movie, the pennies dropping that why that they never included this actress in the initial trailer. It, it explains why now they never included her and, if, and I think my memory says to me they just peripherally had her in it um, in, the, uh, in the window dressings of it uh, rather than central which is probably not in running time she holds narrative but in in spirit she certainly I think is I think it is it is controversial that someone of, of such an age has been put through the movie process the movie making process because she is actually so bloody old she's not just like Grace Jones old. She's actually bloody old. Yeah. Because moving magic can make somebody speak uh, and appear healthily, um, uh, should it be done? It, all I could think about was just how hard it must have been for the actress to do her part to be filmed. It appeared that she was going to be in it quite a lot and she was introduced to the family of one of the girls and she was allowed to go upstairs to see the girl. She, she appeared to then begin to have a lot of dialogue between her and the main character, the father of the other girl. No, the, 
they seem to be getting on really pally, really chummy, and she seemed to be muscling the character, seemed to be muscling in the narrative. Uh, she seemed to be getting really comfortable in the movie's narrative. And I thought, here we go. She's actually going to become not just an anchor in a movie, but but she's going to be in it for quite some time, more so than what some of the reviews are saying. But it was uh, it was misleading because no sooner than than I thought was thinking that that she did go upstairs to see the girl in her bedroom, and then that all came to a sudden end. Wonderful! It was wonderful stuff. It just was just sad. She was so bloody old. Right now, as to the movie itself. Now, I am now close on two days from seeing it. Right, I'll start by saying I couldn't see. I couldn't see how the it was the how. Um, Chris McNeil could tell that it was the same demon. I, as a punter, couldn't detect that. I couldn't detect that as a viewer. And now, 48 hours after, close on, I still can't work it out. I looked on the Wikipedia page, and it's not in that either. It doesn't say it there either. Um, in that page, it says how... Uh, her her character had similar experience. So I'm not biased toward Wikipedia, but I can use that as part of my research diet. Yeah, Wikipedia. It doesn't mention it doesn't mention that she how she saw the same demon in the in in the girls who which in this movie are now possessed. Just that. Because she'd had similar experiences in her life, that she thought that she would then go and have a, uh, an interest. She would have an interest in this bout of possession. So anyone there, anyone, any of you lot watching this now can shed light on that. Am I missing something? Did I miss something in the script, in the screenplay, to say that it was the same demon? Because she was in the child's bedroom and it did come across that way in the script that they had met before. I think that's there, they, that's an exact quote, isn't it? How that they had met before, but without the proof being there to say how and why. And go in the comments below and say, were it did actually say it? If so. And, it, and that scene when Victor turned up at McNeil's retirement beach house when he was served the whiskey how now in retrospective how that scene was directed it was cleverly cleverly directed where Victor stood up from the table away from McNeil and then he began to look around the beach house and that was when we had a lot of McNeil's dialogue regarding her daughter Reagan and her memoirs and her thoughts and feelings on possession. That's when they were taking place. And in retrospective, my feelings are how that how that whole sequence was cleverly directed to enable the editing of her dialogue for it to sound like she was speaking healthily and with eloquence. How her age certainly in my respect her health could no way have enabled her to do to have done so in real time yeah my thoughts in retrospect that how cleverly that scene was directed to enable the movie magic in the editing and that McNeil is now 90 I think it was grand the way it was two of the girls playing out the possession. I think that they both played an equal role, had an equal share in the drama and the story and the screenplay. I think both played off each other really well and I think they had equal strength in the narrative. I think it was to the benefit 
for the movie overall that there were two of them. A grand sequence where the families that were in the woods and the way they searched that, the old derelict, just some remnants, remnants of a demolished house. We saw the father looking in there with a torch. We saw a lot of imagery, some graphic imagery, and we saw some of the parents looking around at the woods on the torchlight. They were all on the same page. They want at the end they wanted the girls to be found. I think the, well, the relationship between Victor and the daughter. Um I thought that was strong and I thought it was believable. Um, maybe how he hadn't found a girlfriend uh, and, and a partner um, by the time the daughter was 10, how he hadn't or didn't mention of having a partner. I thought that was quite unbelievable. To look at all appearances, nice house, uh, well kept fellow. Uh, guy who enjoyed a, quite a recreational occupation, um, how he could not perhaps have found a partner in the 10 years, uh, perhaps quite unbelievable. I think the sequence where we had the nosy neighbour entering Victor's house uh, with a few of his mates to like bless the place off his own accord, well far-fetched and highly unbelievable. I liked the nurse being a next door neighbour, the way she was introduced into the plot. Um, I thought it was quite believable that she had a past um, with religion. I liked the lady of colour who was the who was there at the end in the finale, who who dealt with the spiritual side, the energy, the aura, the unseen. I think the imagery when Victor was at the ruins in the woods where they found their satchels and how that played off in the finale. I thought that involvement was grand. I'm going to uh, move on to the finale without spoilers, trying to keep it spoiler free. So we're talking like six, seven people. So it was, high, it was highly organised and it was, it was wonderfully filmed. It was, it was directed, I found it was directed really well and it was really enjoyable. The build up was marvellous. I thought I was going to die actually. The, uh, it was so dramatic and with the surround sound I was finding I was having to hold myself and really contain my adrenaline. Wonderful, absolutely pounding, thunderous stuff. Direction was marvellous. Really delving into the drama in character study, character play, rather than when we had the 70s Exorcist movie. It was more so for the shock and the horror. I found this one was on the flip on the flip side of the of the same coin, if you will. And I thought the imagery we had earlier in when we, uh, Victor was in the woods trying to find his daughter, I thought that tie in there, the imagery tie in there, was wonderful. Harping back to the original um, Blair Witch Project, how its mo, how its how its twist played out harping back to that, being alone and being in a place of dereliction and debris, a place of loneliness, isolation, um, having a common theme there I found very interesting and very effective and leading very sad to how the exorcism how that whole sequence plays out. Very, very sad, very emotional, and extremely upsetting, um, and very, very well and effectively directed. It was, it was, it was, it was really full on. I found it really full on, but at the same time, extremely gripping both sides. Uh, both sides of the same coin where I, of the uncomfortable coin. I was conscious of myself finding I was may, may finding myself having to leave. I was extremely conscious of it where I thought if I stay I may collapse in on myself but also if I do, if I heed that and leave the cinema I'll miss, I'll, I'll miss this wonderful, potentially wonderful, wonderful piece of popcorn cinema yeah, I thought, and 
and I decided to stay. Yeah, I did. I decided to stay. Um, and I, I, um, I dug deep and I stayed the CG with the priest at the exorcism. That was spot on. And I know it was CG, but it was spot on CG. Uh, it was really effective. It looked great. Uh, I saw it come in, sort of, as he was putting his penneth in as the uh, progression of the CG was moving on. If you've seen the movie, you'll get what I well, get my meaning there as the CG was was progressing throughout the sequence. It was truly effective and it was truly thrilling to watch. Marvellous, marvellous. Am I glad I went to see it? Am I glad I went to see it? Yes. Do I think it needed to be made? Uh, if it wasn't the same demon, I don't see the point in the fact that the two movies were connected. If it wasn't the same demon, um, other than, it, for argument's sake, you could say that um, simply the fact that Ellen Burstyn's character had had the experience over the years um, with exorcism and the like, that she was brought back to the movie, back to the franchise. But surely a woman of 88, 89, 90 years old to be brought back because she was a woman of experience really pushing the envelope um it's just really baffling um we lose her and really the movies could still the movie could still have, could still have been made exactly the same way we could have had the same screenplay everything everything the same set of characters other than having burston's character in the movie um well we had the cameo at the end didn't we which also connected the first movie. Um, really puzzling, um, absolutely bizarre. It's just the most strangest sort of things to have made the movie with the connection to the original and simply not making it, it obvious.